Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 425. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you're here today because some of you out there are, are looking to grow, we'll call it your own personal empire in various different ways, shapes, and forms, and, and that's great. And others of you are just trying to grow a smaller version of that empire. We'll call it just a small little fiefdom. Either way it goes, it, your workplace has a culture. Your workplace has, well, people in it, your business is a collection of individuals who are all working towards a common goal. But my question to you is, do you actually understand, acknowledge, value, and or appreciate the unique abilities of the individuals that you currently are working with? Hmm. Today's guest is going to help us with things like that and more. I have with me today, none other than Richard Nesbitt. He is the president and CEO of Global Risk Institute and has recently co-authored a book, Results at the Top, Using Gender Intelligence to Create a Breakthrough in Growth. Now, what I like about that is the breakthrough in growth. And if you're like me, you're like, what's gender intelligence? I understand. We're gonna find out today, guys, and we're gonna use it to make sure your business grows. So help me welcome Richard Nesbitt. Richard, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. Glad that you are here, sir. Now, this being the first time that you are here, I have to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody the first time that they're here. Are you ready? Go ahead. All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes. You know, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, etc. Because I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. For example, uh, if, a, if you can imagine occasionally entrepreneurs, we, we look at ourselves and we think we're, you know, improving the lives of our customers. Or we can even imagine ourselves saving them, sometimes occasionally dressed up in capes and tights, etc. But also like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. So if you think of, say, Spider-Man, there was a time where he was just a kid going to school, taking some pictures, trying to make sure he had some money so he could eat. And then one day he gets bit by a spider and realizes, hey, I've got this new skill that I get to use for good and or evil. So my question to you is as follows. Before your book, before uh, the Global Risk Institute, before being a professor, before all the things that people know you for today, who would you say is Richard Nesbitt? Well, that's a very good question. I would say that I am a simple person, generally. I was born on a farm, raised on a farm. I actually went to a one-room one schoolhouse for several years and uh, was able to, through education and through you know some good fortune, uh, uh, get, uh, uh, undertake some really interesting uh, assignments in my career. Got a chance to work in New York, London, uh, and, and uh, Toronto, and uh, have really been fortunate to get to where I am today. Got it, got it. So I have a question because often the the background of an entrepreneur uh, has a lot to do with things that they're still practicing today. So I'm, I'm curious, are there any lessons from the farm that play into either your work ethic or things that you do today that that you're actually grateful for? Uh, I think the uh, there's no substitute for hard work hmm. is a, a very traditional approach, but that's true. 
Uh, skill is very important, but let's face it, very few of us are Steve Jobs, uh, <laughs> and very few of us ever will be Steve Jobs. Right. Uh, but we can all succeed. We all have talents, and we can all succeed uh, through hard work. And I think that's what I have taken with me through my entire life. Yeah, totally understood. Uh, it kind of levels the playing field right there when hard work is the, the barometer, so to speak. We can work our way almost through any particular type of problem. Now, I know if I'm... Most, if I'm like anything, like the most of the the people who are listening right now, they're wondering something as simple as what is gender intelligence? Well, gender intelligence was a term coined by my co-author Barbara Annis, and it's uh, there's an entire book on the whole topic. But uh, it it is essentially, if I was to sum it up in the way that. Um, uh, used uh, today in business is that it's uh, uh, taking the, the talent of both genders and using that to improve your business. So uh, uh, the combination of men and women together is a superior outcome than either one alone. Okay, so this is good, but there are some industry some would argue that are dominated by one gender or the other for for various reasons so even i don't know uh let me think auto i have seen more males car salespeople than female so i'm just gonna put salespeople in, into that lump would you're saying that the mix of those would be better than one or the other well, normally I focus, uh, and the book focuses on leadership. So we're looking at management okay. people, and we're Got looking it. at uh, boards of directors. So uh, what our uh, focus on the leadership side would say, yes, it would be. So a combination of the talents of men and the talents of women together in leadership is a superior combination to one or the other. Totally understand. So what has been some of the discovery like when you say improve business that can many of us that are listening can translate that in different ways some you know does that mean my my workplace is more fun or does that mean that we earn more money does that mean that we have lower expenses what, what does it mean when you say improve business using yep. gender intelligence well uh first and foremost it does mean improved financial performance Okay. Uh, and so that would mean improved earnings, improved um, uh, cash flow, improved dividends, and ultimately improved stock price. So that combination has been showed in study after study after study, the combination of men and women in leadership uh, to be superior in generating those traditional uh, uh, things that are called shareholder value. But it goes even beyond that. Okay. Uh, it actually has been proven that having a diverse uh, management team uh, creates value beyond just the shareholder value, but into other things like innovation, hmm. into environmental record, uh, into employee satisfaction. So it's, it's not just the soft things, and it's not just the hard things. It's actually right across the, the entire board of benefits. Okay, so you're, you're saying a diversified, uh, a gender diversified management team relates to a higher employee satisfaction yes it will yeah it will explain, uh, because please. well because your employees are looking at management uh, it, you know as role models and leaders and if you have an, a, 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 an employee base that is looking at only one gender that that is actually exclusion excludes the other gender and so all the employees that are not that aspire to that leadership position will feel excluded. Interesting. People want to know, people want to know that they have that they if they work hard and if they have the talent that they can move up without impairment based on their gender. Agreed. And being a father of daughters, I want that message to be there, but I don't feel like that's the common message women hear in the marketplace. Why would you say that's the case? Well, I think it's it's changing. I think it's been a long uh, history of um, uh, in this area. This this uh, this uh, uh, challenge has gone back 
you know, many, many decades. And it's starting to change. Uh, but I think that there's um, uh, the research on the impact of having uh, diverse management teams is only approximately 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's really only becoming understood now that what a significant impact it can have. Uh, and by the way, this is not only in uh, United States or Canada or the United Kingdom. It's right around the world. It applies to China. It applies to, uh, you know, throughout Europe. It applies to uh, every country, uh, South America. And, and, uh, and so the research is, only, is fairly new. 20 years is not a long time. And uh, this is, uh, things are evolving, but it's still going to take some more time. Okay. And now you mentioned that it's it has a worldwide impact. It's not necessarily related to any particular country, but is there any particular industry maybe that benefits more from this than another or is this just across the board? Yeah, we we haven't seen any industry specific uh, uh um, numbers. It's generally across the board. Uh and what the research has shown um uh, that, you know, as you add women, say, to a board of directors, for example, mm -hmm. as you add women to a board that used to be only men, you consistently get benefits uh, all the way up to uh, gender parity. Interesting. OK, so <laughs> just because I'm curious now, uh, what about the inverse of that? What if you were adding men to a, a board that was uh, women? Same thing? Well, though, there's not that many of those, but you have to expect that the same would apply. That one type of person dominating a, a leadership team or a board does not provide the, um, the best solution for the operation of that company on behalf of the shareholders. So we would expect, there's very few examples of that, but we would expect that to apply as well. Got it, got it. Okay, so... And now you made a distinction up to gender parity. Is there a law of diminishing returns or something going on after that? Well, the research is unclear on that. There's not enough research. There's not enough data points to really understand what happens if you go beyond that. Uh, people would, you know, generally you would expect that there would be, uh, once you move past the gender parity, there should be, you know, the, the theory would be that, your uh, you start to have diminishing returns because you start to go the other way, but there's not enough research on that to really be conclusive. Okay, got it. So you mentioned earlier that one of the things was also financial performance. So when you say financial performance, obviously we're talking about earnings, etc. But is it is it really significant financial performance or just incremental improvement? No, no, it's, it's very significant, and it happens uh, consistently over time as well. So it's not just a one-time hmm. uh, financial performance improvement, and there's been a number of studies which have shown that it's significant uh, financial performance. I'm not talking doubling, but certainly multiple percentage points uh, superior performance. Interesting. So if there's a company or an entrepreneur listening right now, and you saw that, you know, their board was primarily one gender or another, one of your recommendations might actually be to go find the 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 gender or find someone else who could also be, uh, you know, on the board that's of the gender that's in the minority? Well, that'd be a good start. Uh, uh, generally, it's a lonely place if you add just one person of the other gender. <laughs> on that board, uh, so and and there is there is some studies that say that you need to get to a certain percentage before you really start to see the, the impact. And some number some research has shown you need at least three uh, directors who are women, or thirty percent, uh, in order before you start to see the significant benefits. But there is also research that shows. If you have a board that's all men and you add one woman, you will see you will see improved performance. Huh. <laughs> OK, this is interesting. So how did you come up with the idea that this book was necessary results at the top using gender intelligence to create breakthrough growth? 
Well, we wanted to do a book that was really uh, directed at men and how men could improve their organizations, their companies, and, and whatever other organizations they are currently involved in, that they could use gender intelligence uh, to improve their own companies. So this is a very unique book in that it's, it's addressed to men. Now, women will like to uh, read this book as well because it'll explain uh, a lot about men's behavior and uh, what needs to, uh, how men could um, change that behavior in order to improve their companies. So this book is ex very unique uh, in that it's addressed to men, but it's about their responsibility for improving their companies using gender intelligence. You know, I, I can see a lot of spouses buying this for their husbands. <laughs> and that would be a good thing because they both should read it. Yeah, I, I, I'm just thinking about the, the typical relationship dynamics and how these things happen. So what led you to the, the uh, I guess, the understanding or just saying, look, this book must be printed because, that you know, writing a book is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. And there is a process to it and it takes time, research, etc. But why does this book need to be here now? Well, I, I don't think we're the only people that are thinking uh, this way. I think there's a, there's certainly a, um, a a group of people forming this view, and you're seeing a number of advocates, men advocates as well as women, uh, advocating this uh, in in our business uh, communities today, right around the world. Uh, it's still a minority, uh, and so what we wanted to do was gather all of the research and uh, techniques into one place and it's it's almost a primer for uh for men young men middle-aged men and older men to read and understand what's going on in uh, the dynamics between men and women in leadership and use that uh knowledge to improve their company so we wanted to have one document that that sums it all up and really uh should be read by a lot of different uh, people uh, that want to improve their companies. Yeah. Okay. I, I agreed. Agreed. So w speaking of, again, this gender diversity, I know one of the issues around that uh, topic in general is that the, the whole equal pay uh, type of issue, is that something that's part of the challenge, why this occurs or part of how we can solve it? Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. And what I want to say to you is that the number one mistake that I have ever made in business, number one, has been waiting too long to do the books, waiting too long to get the bookkeepers, the accountants, the CPAs, the CFOs involved. And I don't want you to make that same mistake. That mistake cost me over six figures and now for a significant discount you have the ability to get your books together using fresh books so what i want you to do is i want you to go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary again that's gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary fresh books is the easy to use software designed to help you, the small business owner, the freelancer, get organized and save time on invoicing, getting paid faster, keeping those books in order so that it becomes a bonus for you to do your taxes as opposed to a burden. Go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary and get started today. And now let's get back to the rest of the story. Well, it, it is part of how we can solve it in the sense of, uh, you know, I would, of course, uh, and, and most people, I think, would believe strongly in equal pay for work, equal work. There should be no question about that. Uh, however, uh, even with that, you still see uh, women are paid less than men on aggregate. And the reason for that is women are not... Uh, fully included in all positions in our companies and other organizations. In other words, they're not in the higher paid management jobs to the ex same extent that men are. So that has a that has a reducing effect on the average earnings of women. And so, so I wouldn't say it's um, uh, I, I, what I would say is that that is an important part of addressing that issue. Is that women have to play a full role in the leadership of uh, organizations 
And if they do that, that will have the effect of bringing their income up uh, uh, to the same level as men. Um, and assuming there's strong uh, laws around equal pay for work for equal work, then that should um, uh, significantly change the pattern that we see today. Got it. So, what would you say to that? Uh we as entrepreneurs could do better when thinking uh, about this because you know i know for myself there's i i intentionally surround myself with a lot of female advisors because i know uh i probably i need to add a few more male advisors actually uh simply because uh it my company does actually do better i tend to make better decisions when i at least have input of any kind but what can we do as entrepreneurs from the beginning? Say we're beginning to build the business to make sure that we don't end up in this situation. Well, you, you've you obviously learned from experience that you make better decisions when you have input from uh, a variety of different types of people. Uh, and, and one of those different ty- uh, groups of people is women. Correct. Uh, so, so you've learned that. And, and, and by the way, uh, there's, there's many others who have learned that as well. And I was one of those people that learned that uh, in my business. And so I think that um, what I think entrepreneurs need to understand is this is an important um, uh, issue in the development of their own business. So uh, they need to think about including women. uh, Now, it could be a woman entrepreneur or Mm. a man entrepreneur. So either one of those people needs to think about having a gender balanced business. uh, management team and ultimately and a board of directors of course as well in order to maximize the benefits that they want to provide to their shareholders so uh, too often people forget about that and they're too busy with business they're too busy you know with sales they're too busy with um, you know some of the technical aspects of their business and that will ultimately hurt them in the long in the, in the medium and longer term because they haven't addressed this issue so I think it needs to go right on the top uh, uh, top 10 list of any entrepreneur so that they can um, they can uh, achieve the best results for their business. Well, one of the things that's going through my mind is communication. Because for leaders to be, I don't know, effective together, they've got to be able to effectively communicate. And <laughs> let's just say that there are times where I'm trying to communicate with my wife and it's not always effective. So it it would seem to me that there's also got to be more to just having, it's not just any male or any female. It seems like there seems to be additional skill sets that would be required to make this work. Well, well, I would say two things about that. First of all, your relationship with your spouse is not a business relationship. It's a different kind of relationship. And, and I'm sure she feels the same way about you. Uh, <laughs> Defin- and, 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 definitely. <laughs> and that has nothing to do with business. Uh, and, and those relationships will carry on and they're, they're very complex. And, and, and I don't, I'm not an expert in that. Uh, but, but what we do know is that, um, yes, it's important to always hire the best person. Uh, but if your best people are all, if you're a male and your best people you hire are always male, you're not going to perform as well as you would if you had a diverse uh, management team. It's, it's been proven, and so you have to you have to work hard to find that gender diversity and gender balance that uh, that may have eluded you in the past, and that is and companies that do that will perform better. So that may mean you've got to move out of your comfort zone. And let's face it, people tend to hire people like themselves. Uh, And and you've got to move out of your comfort zone because um, that is not going to lead to the best outcome, having all sorts of people who are just like yourself. Uh, Agreed, agreed. But you're bringing up something that in my head I I keep thinking about is what if we can't find a quote unquote qualified candidate of the opposite sex do yeah. what, yeah, what do you do yeah, then no you should always hire qualified candidates no one's saying that you should just go out in the street and hire you know somebody walking down the street of course not <laughs> uh but what that means is uh if you're going to go hire somebody 
uh, are you looking at an, an, are you looking at a diverse enough source of uh, people that you're hiring? Are you including that criteria in your hiring criteria? Are you interviewing a diverse set of candidates? Uh, so if you always go and hire from a particular business school or a particular engineering school that has a certain uh, uh, gender makeup, then you're probably not going to be able to change uh, your outcome. So maybe you should be, if that's the case, uh, maybe you should be looking at a broader source of, uh, in, for intake than just your traditional source. And that will ultimately lead to better performance. Got it. Got it. So then based on that, how high does this uh, achieving this parity go on the you know priorities list before you're like, never mind, it, it's not that important? <laughs> well, that's a that's a, a interesting and difficult question to answer. You know, there's obviously many important things when you're an entrepreneur and a business person. Uh, and so we're not saying that this is this is the thing that you do before you do anything else. Obviously, there's many things you have to do, but this is this should be uh, one of the items that you consider as an entrepreneur. Uh, and let's face it, your customers are 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 uh, diverse, and yes. that actually diverse that diversity is actually increasing. And so, if you're not diverse, how do you think your customers are going to respond to your business? Uh, and then, and also th- your employee base is probably diverse as well. And so I, I, we talked about that earlier. What happens if your management is all sort of a single type of person, all male? Uh, and, and let's say you have a significant proportion of your workforce is female. Well, they're going to feel disenfranchised. They're going to feel like they don't have the opportunities that uh, their male counterparts as well, and that leads to employee uh, less less employee satisfaction. So it's one of the priority items. It's not the only priority item, but it is something that as uh, uh, all business people, all leaders should be thinking about today. Yeah. Okay. I, I hear that. And what's coming to my mind now is about the the transition period. I mean, someone listening could be realizing, uh uh-oh, (laughs) we need to make a change here. But you said it earlier that if, you know, no one wants to be the first and only, and the idea of, you know, going through that process, that can be a little bit challenging. How does, how do you, how does one begin to make that change in that mix? Because that journey could seem fraught full of bumps. Well, and it will be, and it's going to take time. Uh, If you're starting from from a zero diversity, it's going to take time. You're not going to be able to do it all at once. Uh, but what what we're recommending and advocating is that CEOs that uh, seek this improvement, they have to have it as a as a as a goal and a and a, a goal that they're going to achieve in their lifetime. Uh, uh, too often, this has been a goal that somebody else is going to achieve in some other lifetime, <laughs> um, and uh, and and. And that's not going to be sufficient for them to to uh, reap the benefits of this. So, so uh, yes, they have to give themselves enough time. Um, but you know, let's take a board of directors for example. Board of directors will quite often have term limits, and so you actually know when existing directors will fulfill their full term. And then what you have to do is you have to you have to prepare for that and have sufficient candidates of both genders that can replace that person uh, when, the, when the term limit uh, occurs. And so uh, there, there needs to be more work done. If you just leave it to the last minute and say, oh, I didn't know uh, that person was retiring, now I need to replace them, You're, the tendency is you just go back to people you know. And, and, as, as, and you tend to just pick people who are kind of like yourself uh, because that's who you're comfortable with. So more forward planning uh, and, and, and knowing and believing that this is something that is important and will improve your company. Uh, but it is going to take time. Yeah, I, I can, I can see it, it taking time. It just, it seems like it would be real to some degree, a really long time in order to actually reap the benefits. So with that thought process in mind, what kind of expectation should an entrepreneur have for being able to see the results from beginning to make these changes? Is this a one year, oh. two year, 10 year process? Uh, no, it won't be. It, it, it's more, much more immediate than that. It's in, it, you will start to see uh, the research says or shows that uh, if you have a board that's all men 
and you add one woman to the board, you will start to see the benefits virtually immediately. Hmm. So it, it's that it's that stark. So it's not a long-term uh, process. It's a short-term process. And what I would also point out, it's also the lowest cost thing you can do to improve your results. Um, you're not going to pay a board of directors uh, a male any more than you're going to pay a female, and you're going to pay them the same. And therefore, um, it's actually a zero-cost option uh, alternative to improving your company. It's one of the few zero-cost alternatives there are <laughs> to really improve your company. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, I get it. It's just of all the things I've uh, ever thought about in terms of, hey, how can we make business better? Gender diversity was not on the list. I And because of and that. I, and I think and I think you're like maybe, you know, a majority of men. I must say, like, you're no different than a majority of men. Uh-huh. Not that you're against gender diversity and not that you're, you're against it. Uh, or, you know, not that you don't believe women should have an equal uh, uh, place in society, you're probably in favor of it. It's just that it wasn't important to you. It's not your issue. You don't really know what to do about it. This is where most people are. Uh, they're not against it, but right. they just don't know what to do about it. Well, and, and that's kind of my my point is, why is this not uh, brought up more? <laughs> I guess it's, 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 you know because I there are certain things that you know when I'm as I'm listening to you I'm going well that that kind of makes sense you know decisions are a better with advice and if that advice is diversified and one of the diversification points happens to be gender it would seem to make sense that this would be something that's way more common. Now you said you did say though that. I have the viewpoint of most men. I was like, cool. So I, which actually made me wonder, does that mean women typically have by default, whether they know or not more diverse boards? Well, there's very few uh, examples of that. Uh, I would say that, you know, just anecdotal experience says that, you know, women tend to hire more women. Uh, They're more comfortable uh, hiring women than men. Now that's a that's a broad generalization. Uh, so one of the secrets of improving your gender diversity in your leadership team, every woman you bring in, it gets easier, okay? Because they they will then uh, seek other qualified women to come in and support that management uh, team. Uh, but it, not enough. There's not enough data points to really understand. <laughs> What happens uh, in in uh, boards of only women? There's very very few examples of that. Got it. Totally understood. Totally understood. But it does explain my CFO's recommendations right now. <laughs> so I, I get it. Uh, I get it uh, a, a lot. So I, I definitely uh, appreciate the, the time that you're putting in here. So I, I know there's a number of people who are listening that probably want to understand more about what you guys are are doing and maybe even pick up a copy of the book what's going to be the best way for them to connect with you sir well the book will not be out until uh, june 6 in bookstores so uh i would suggest if you want to make sure you're uh, get a copy early is go on amazon and search results at the at the top and you'll be able to uh order a pre uh, pre-order copy of uh, of the book and that's the best way at the moment it'll be out in june Awesome. So as we wind down here, I've got one more question for you, because I think your answer is going to be interestingly unique. Um, And for a moment, let's pretend that someone listening, uh, they're standing in front of that, what I would call the superhero outfit store. They they're going they're ready to take their business to that next level or even just start for that matter. However, they have a companion and that companion comes in the form of a voice and that voice says things and reminds them of, you know, all the things that they can't do, why it won't work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And for some people, they're even related to that voice, so they hear it a lot. My question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that they're actually going to follow through. They're going to do what you suggest, sir, and they're going to do so in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you suggest that they do? Well, I would suggest that they uh, uh, think very carefully before they act 
about what they're trying to achieve and ensure they're trying to achieve it for the right reasons. Uh, they do have to find qualified people to work with them in leadership or on their board of directors. So it probably is going to take longer than 24 to 48 hours to do that. But okay. you can start. you can start by examining your your uh, your own uh, pre uh, uh, preconceptions about why you do what you do and you can start to think about well why is it that I don't have more women uh, on my management team or on my board of directors is it is it is it do I have a reason for that uh, and it do and so uh, this the author is telling me that if I did I would have improved performance so shouldn't I be acting on that so I think so what I would like to see them do is become curious about this and start to look into it more and convince themselves because once they do that, they will then go out and act. Men are very good at acting uh, and, and, and doing things once they are convinced of, of a certain uh, uh, set of facts. And so what I want to do for men is get them convinced on this set of facts. Nice. And well said. I, I definitely appreciate the, the work that you're putting in. I would have never thought that, hey, here's a zero cost way of improving business. And I appreciate you spreading that message, writing the book and making that happen. And I thank you for sharing your knowledge, wisdom, as well as your insight here with us today at the Cashflow Diary, sir. Good. Thank you very much for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means go grab a copy of Results at the Top because I know that you know you want more from your activities as an entrepreneur. And we just found a very unique and interesting way to go make that happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. <laughs>